Okay, this is a very much a niche application. Assessing people with nipple discharge and introductal papillary lesions is probably going to be under 5% of your total volume. This is one of those cases where you're always going to want to do the rolled nipple maneuver. You know, I should probably say that in your overall ultrasound volume, it'll be well under 5%. But at Sally Job in, in Denver, 10% of all our biopsies were papillomas. So of the people who actually go to interventional ultrasound-guided biopsy, 10% are papillomas. So it's not uncommon uh, amongst the group that actually gets biopsied. Now we know that mammography doesn't help us much in people with nipple discharge in, in the vast majority of cases. Galactography is still considered the gold standard in some centers. People are resistant to do it. It's not a difficult test. Uh, how many people here don't do galactography? How many people do? Okay, it's good. Most of you do. That's a change, you know, but two or three years ago I couldn't say that, but I still find it very useful. I still think it's the gold standard. Could MR be better? Yeah, I think in micropapillary DCIS, MR is better, but for standard large duct papilloma, I, I still like galactography better. Yeah, but the role of ultrasound is still expanding and being defined largely because if we find something, whether we find it on MR or galactography, we're going to do an ultrasound guided biopsy, so you've still got to find it in ultrasound. So regardless of how good galactography and MR are, we have to find it in ultrasound in order to do an ultrasound guided vacuum assisted biopsy. Could you do an MR guided biopsy? Yeah, but that's sort of a really difficult thing compared to an ultrasound biopsy. It's, it's much easier to do an ultrasound biopsy and much cheaper.